Hello there! I'm Doig, the colorist half of Doig and Swift, and I'm here to show you how I'd approach flying a comic. So, this is typically what India would give me. We're kind of looking at a lot of establishing shots, a lot of backgrounds, so India approached the comic backgrounds first. There's like 45-ish characters and the line art themselves overlap. So what I'm going to show you in the forthcoming video is how I would approach tackling that without compromising my usual workflow. So before we begin, turn off anti-aliasing for everything. Your lasso, your magic wand, paint bucket, just, just toggle it off. And then what I go in and do is I use the lasso tool and I pick out the major shapes of the characters. What you want to be doing is working big to small and I was specifically focusing on the characters here because I wanted to lift them away from the background. This will give us the data we need later to create layer masks which will allow us to push that line art and remove it from wherever the areas of the characters are. When you're coloring a comic, flats are essential to give you color selections that you can use later to make sure that all of the color hugs underneath the line art. The reason I've turned aliasing off is so that when I make selections it, they're very solid and there are no gaps between my areas of color. This is related to when comics are printed. They're usually separated out into different channels or C, M, Y, and K. And during printing there's a margin of error. If the plates slip, then when the K or the black is printed over the top of your colors, sometimes they're slightly misaligned, so flats ensure that there's no noticeable or garish white of your, of your paper left underneath. So here you can see me, I'm selecting the peach main background color and also the the white outer gutters of the page and then I'm using the magic wand tool in Photoshop to select these. I'll then inverse the selection, select the folder that India has contained all of the background line art in and then use my selection as the layer mask and this will just pop everything out of the background beneath the characters and allow them to sit freely. So if I zoom in here you can see that all of the, the characters are now no longer crisscrossed or intersected by the, the background line art. At this point I'm starting to think about what sort of palette I want for the overall page and I discussed with India what she wanted for the feeling of the school which was kind of drab and run down uh, so I started picking references from from the internet of schools that resonated with both of us and yeah went to work selecting those Even at the flat stage, I'm very conscious of the amount of K that are inherent in each color selection, and I'm very mindful of not adding any un unnecessary K to the page. Um, this is predominantly so that when the page goes to print, I don't have any black muddying the colors. It's something I learned at a recent workshop with Jordi Belair, and it was fantastic. Uh, and I'm now really like mindful of not including any K in my color selections. So India created these characters off the cuff almost. There are certain characters that she knows can, that are going to return in Midge's class later, but it meant that there was a lot of freedom for me to explore what the different clothing styles or different color arrangements of the characters on the page could be. And I'm just kind of going by gut. 
I know that India wants to go for a sort of pseudo-American-English cross-setting that's neither but both. Um, and there's a, also an element of time in the past there. There's clothing styles from maybe the 70s and 80s. Uh, it's a good wish-wash of nostalgia and uh, just good fun, really. Here you can see I'm opening up a previous page. I wanted to really check the, the contrast between uh, the more dreamlike introduction and the more mundane sort of schoolroom environment. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you everyone for all your support, we really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video where I'm going to explore taking this page into lighting and texture. See you next time.